according to this new poll. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that works over time. Christopher, the numbers that Philip is referring to is the 12% that Ben Carson is enjoying right now, up five percentage points since the debate. Do you agree that he's really the winner when you take a look at the whole field? I think he definitely, as Philip said, had the biggest bump in the debate. But what I love that this shows is it kind of puts a pinprick in the idea that the Republican primary voters are simply angry. Because he's just like Donald Trump. He's an outsider. He's not a politician. But he's the anti-Trump in that he, his style is so soft-spoken. It's so cerebral. He's not angry. He's not raging. His biggest moment was a laugh line at the end of the debate. And voters are just seem to be sick of the Washington politicals, uh, politicians, the governors, the senators. They didn't really move at all during this polling, except a little bit of Ted Cruz. And when voters embracing Ben Carson now, it's they're, they're just saying we don't necessarily need the anger that Donald Trump brings to the stage, but we do want someone who's completely different from these polished, practiced politicians on the stage. Is it sustainable, Philip? What do you think? Well, I, I, first, I, I want to differentiate between angry voters and angry politicians. Donald Trump has a lot of energy. He's, he gets he gets worked up a lot. But I think that the fact that 42 percent of the vote went to Fiorina Carson and Trump, all of whom, none of whom have held elected office, shows that there is some anger at Washington establishment to, to Chris's point. Uh, is it sustainable? It's a great question. No no real lead we've seen so far has been sustainable, which sort of keeps, uh, you know, follows the trend from 2012. Donald Trump actually held pretty steady well, in this Well, that's an interesting point, interesting. isn't it, Philip? And Christopher, I'd love your thoughts on this. And I, Christopher, if I'm wrong, you can correct me, but I think you do a pretty good impression of Donald Trump. I think last time you were on our, <laughs> is that true? I think you did do a pretty good impression for us last time. Is Donald Trump sustainable? Is he Is he the one that is sustaining, actually, in the numbers? Trump is definitely sustaining where you see people that we'd expect, like Jeb Bush, to continue to rise, lowering down. It's whether or not Donald Trump has reached that 25% ceiling. Uh, as some people have reported, that he seems to he hasn't really risen beyond this 25%, but he also hasn't dropped below it. So it could also be a floor. I mean, as long as he keeps on going, even, even when he makes massive gaps, he still comes out ahead because, as he says, that everyone else is a loser. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Every time you come on, you're going to have to do that for us. Just because it does. It's, it's, just, it's like he's almost here. What's interesting, Philip, about this, though, when you look at the numbers, primary voters, are GOP primary voters, right. are convinced that Donald Trump, at least according to our numbers, are, is qualified to be president. When you look at the general electorate, which includes right. Democrats, by the way, not as convinced. Right. So we are, and this is typical, we do see this with primary GOP voters, you know, being more involved, more attentive to, the, to what is potentially going to be the nominee, who is going to be the nominee. But what do you think this tells us about the next several months, but also what's ahead as we get past, you know, who is going to be the candidate for president? I think one of the things it tells us is that Donald Trump has done a remarkable job of turning around. I mean, he was... To, to some extent a laughing stock a few months ago, and he's not anymore. He's taken seriously. I think the primary voters uh, on the Republican side do see him as being a, a viable presidential candidate, less so than other candidates, including Jeb Bush. Uh, and I think that that is also a reflection of his having this core base of support that clearly isn't going anywhere, even after all the kerfuffle that happened after the debate with him. His poll numbers didn't move. He has a solid core base of support, and as long as he can bring enough people who think he's acceptable into that, it's an interesting game. Well, and Christopher, as we finish up here, there have been those that say, well, these are just voters that are angry, that want something different. And it seems very, it's very dismissive of, of voters who say, actually, no, I'm not, ang not only am I not angry, I just, I like Donald Trump. I, I want to see what he's going to do. So what do you think is next for Donald Trump as you take a look at the next weeks ahead? Well, for such an unlikable man. He's incredibly likable. I, I love watching him on television. I think a lot of people do. And I think he's really a reaction against the political correctness and the suffocating political atmosphere that has existed for a couple of years. So people, I think, really find that likable. One interesting trend I saw is just a little bit he's moved down. Has been a space where Senator Ted Cruz has moved up. Mm. And that may be the people who are really upset with Washington, D.C. I mean, Mitch McConnell's least favorite Republican has got to be Ted Cruz. But people who may have a more conservative leanings or more loyalty to the Republican brand will start to move from Trump to Cruz. And I think you'll see him benefit from, from Donald Trump if he falls behind or even if he surges ahead with the same kind of message that Ted Cruz brings. It'll be interesting to watch. As of right now, as, as we know, Donald Trump is, is serving in jury duty. That must be interesting. We all wish we were there to see if he's actually chosen, which could also add another twist to this story. Philip and Christopher, great to have you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. He'll probably just serve two days before. You know.